Hi, this is Maginoni. Here's some comic reviews for you. We got Avengers, Avengers, more Avengers, Cyclops, Spidey, and Future's End. All right, we'll just get rid of this turd right here. Okay, basically, um, this basically deals with Tim Drake, with him becoming Batman Beyond, and he goes back into the future to learn that everything failed, and he gets joined by a ragtag group, ragtag group of teammates, and they're gonna try to save the day. And it's. You know, this is the sad thing is that a lot of times for me, I, I like to see the bad guys win every now and then. And I like to see, you know, heroes triumph over great odds. But in for some reason, this thing just didn't resonate well with me. It just kind of seemed like, you know, you made us go through a lot just to get to this payoff, which doesn't matter because Convergence is coming out. And for me, that I feel like I've been cheated in that sense. Like, at least with Injustice, they can do whatever they want, and the book is good. The book is one of DC's best books, and it also could easily hold out against a lot of the Marvel titles. And when you have that kind of... Uh, when I see that happen, and I see the potential Future's End could have been, knowing that Convergence is coming out, I'm like, fine you destroyed the universe but who cares it's a wash you know because convergence comes and they can reset things so it's like uh, it's not like it's the worst book of the week because there's some redeeming parts to it very minor redeeming parts but as a whole it's just like why bother why did i why do people bother reading 48 issues you know all right avengers millennium number one I went into this thinking, oh, gee, gosh, it's another Avenger title. But it wasn't actually, it was actually enjoyable. I, I really did like it. The art I thought was pretty decent overall. I liked the banter between Spider-Man and Hawkeye as they were talking about Five Guys and In-N-Out. You know, Five Guys is an awesome burger place, but it's so freaking expensive. But you do get the bag of fries. But In-N-Out does have... Um, delicious cheeseburgers with the uh, Napoleon um, uh, shakes, so that's a tough one. But anyways, this is basically Wanda and Quicksilver are out on a vacation, and they stumble upon a secret Hydra base, and they call in the Avengers to help, and they basically discover that time portal. If you remember that time portal that um, Hydra or AIM had, I should say AIM had, than they used to, you know, bring the the uh, people through. Well, they find that, and they're like, "Hey, wait a second! This this place is understaffed. You know, w there's no time ripples. What's going on?" And that's when they realize that Hydra went to the future, and they know they won. That's why they don't care. And this actually, I think, was a once I got to the end, I was like, "Okay, I'm on board." This this is going to be really, really good, I'm hoping. Alright, Ultron Forever number one. Uh, yeah. There's too much Ultron, but I can tell that they just need to get this out there because of the mo movie. Basically, uh, Doctor Doom handpicks groups of characters from across dimensions to fight Ultron. And, I mean, the Alan Davis does a decent job in terms of the art. But I think with his style, it's kind of polarizing sometimes. A lot, I know some people love him and some people just don't like him. I think he's okay. I think he's pretty decent. I loved um, his Excalibur days. But, anyways. There's... It's, it's a decent setup. But it's just one of those types of things where I can easily see myself just going, you know, there's just too many books. You know, and when you have Millennium and Ultron Forever, I'm definitely going to get Millennium. And maybe I'll just kick back and get Forever if in, a, in a trade if this book pans out to be good. And that's my problem with this book right now. It doesn't really do anything to make me want to buy it. Grabbing Avengers from different times and places doesn't make me want to buy it at all. Especially when I don't care about half, 
have for these characters. But, anyways. Black Vortex. Chapter 10, Cyclops. Black Vortex is Marvel's big turd that they left in your living room and walked out. This is just... I mean, the art... <sighs> okay, my positive thing is the art is good, but this is just stupid. It's, it's just, like, mind-numbingly painful to read sometimes. You know, it's like... I, I, I don't even know where there's consistency going on here. You know, it's like... The last I saw, the Black Vortex was in the hands of Thanos' son. And now it's in the hands of somebody else. And... In order for the heroes to escape, they have to look into the Vortex and power up. And... You have Gene giving Scott psychic mind time with his dad who's not really there. And he doesn't even know if his dad's alive. Because, uh, it's just like, oh, please, just end this madness. You know, even when they power up, the ending is just... It's really cart Saturday morning cartoony. It's just horrible. It It's just... It, it's just... The biggest, this is the biggest piece of dirt I've seen from Marvel in a long time. There is no redeeming value so far from that book series. None. Maybe that should be a new video title. No redeeming value. Black Vortex is the winner. Okay, Amazing Spider-Man, number 17. We have Parker dealing with um, Liz, his love life. You know, because, you know, May and them think that he's going out with the girl, but he's really not because he has the hots for Silk, who apparently in Silk's own book does pretty much forgot about him. And then you have Ghost infiltrating Parker Industries to sabotage him. And overall, I mean, it's, it's, it's still a good book, but to me, it's kind of like I'm getting kind of burned out. It's not Slot's fault. I think the problem is Spider-Man has been on such a high that it's kind of like, where else can you go? You can't get better than being like one of the best. And anytime there's a slippage, and it doesn't even have to be a big slippage. It's just maybe you just don't resonate well with the story. You can't, you can't, you know, like get into it as much. Then you start thinking this book just sucks, and it's not the case, because this book is still good. It's just, like, you know, I kind of just want to move on. I want to do something else. I want to see something different. And it doesn't help when you have turds like this floating around nearby. It just makes you, I mean, it should make me appreciate this a hell of a lot more, but, oh, my God. It's just I spend more time bitching about this than I do enjoying this. But it, I'm really, even though I know I'm getting on its case, you know, Amazing Spider-Man really has been a, a pleasure to read. The slot has done a fantastic job, especially compared to where it used to be. And I should just be really happy that he's still doing high-quality stories. And this really is, I mean, it really is a good storyline. It's, you know, you have the Black Cat turning evil on Parker because of mis that misunderstanding. And it's just, it's really good. It's very well thought out. But I don't know. I'm just like, if Spider-Man took like a four-month leave of absence and then came back, I'd be like, whew, I'm all ready. All right. I may, the Avengers. Number 43. You know, I, I, I really should have enjoyed this book. I really should. I should have enjoyed this on so many levels. You know, this is basically Earth's last-ditch hope against the alien armada. And there's so many things that are happening that are cool. You know, you have Tony crying, let him let me out of this prison so I can die fighting type thing. And then you have everybody banding together to fight the alien invaders. And then it's just kind of, it reaches this point where it's kind of like, I've seen everything that happens afterwards in other books, other stories, other movies, other everything. It's like 
you have the big secret weapon that's going to destroy everything, and then it breaks down, and then it gets destroyed. And then, oh, just when everybody thinks that everything's hopeless, there's another big powerful weapon coming. And I'm just like, just kill this, just get this thing over with. You know, I, this series, even though Hick, Hickman has done a fantastic setup, the ending, I don't know. I really don't know what's going on. It's just limping. And it's a shame because there's, this is where there's a lot of fighting. A lot of action, the story is just flying at record pace, but there was that section in the middle which was just dragging, and it was just painful. And then now I'm like, I've really, su I think that middle part really makes the story suffer, and the ending is just not what I was hoping this was going to be. So that's why there's just no way I can make this my good book because I I feel that I've read it before. But anyways, that is my. Comic reviews for the week. I'll have more stuff later. I'll have a manga haul coming in probably soon. Um, anyways, like, share. Let me know what you guys picked up this week that you liked. Um, I do the podcast with Cons, Freaks, and Geeks down below. And then we talk about Secret Wars and Convergence. And we'll have some more stuff later. So until next time. <laughs>